The first reading is from Esther, chapter 7, 1 to 6, and 9 to 10, and chapter 9, 20 to 22. <clears throat> so the king and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favour, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me, that is my petition, and the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said. (coughs) A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. The king rose Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs, in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. So the Jews adopted a custom. Oh, hang on. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that day they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and also the 15th day of the month, year by year. As the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the months that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another, and presents to the poor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 124, and we'll read the verses alternately. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, Then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Bless you, Lord not given us as prey to their pity. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our second reading <clears throat> comes from the book of James, chapter 5, starting at verse 12. Above all, my beloved Do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your word, yes, be yes, and your no, be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Only among you suffering, they should pray, and a cheerful, they should sing songs of praise. Only among you sick, They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months. 
It did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> if any among you wander from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back the sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 9 beginning at the 38th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. No one who does the, a deed of power in my name will able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go into hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. But everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So friends, I'm getting old and I was reminded of it again uh, this morning. I'm going to tell you a true story. All right. Well, you can, you can decide whether it's a true story. Uh, the reason I'm getting old is because I realize I've actually told you this story before. Right? So there was a, a question in my mind, shall I tell it again or shall I uh, give you the grace of not having to hear me say it again? And of course, I chose the better part and decided to make you suffer through the story again. So the story goes like this. Right? True story. There were three rabbis. Uh, and they were well revered and respected in their communities. They were quite often seen in the temple every day, and they were known as extremely reverent, extremely holy rabbis because they would come into the temple, they'd run into the middle of the temple, and then throw themselves down and say, I am nothing, I am dust. The first one would do that. Second one, come up beside the first rabbi, throw himself down on the ground and say, I am nothing, I am dust. You prostrate on the ground like this. The third one would run up, throw himself on the ground and say, I am nothing, I am dust. And they would stay like this. Day after day, they would do this for years. And every day they would do this, many saw them, but uh, none more so than the cleaner who used to come in uh, as well. And he'd see them do this every day. So one day he came in, these extremely humble and reverent people right, threw themselves on the ground in the middle. I am nothing, I am dust. Second, I am nothing, I am dust. Third, 
I am nothing. I am dust. And the cleaner was so caught on fire by this incredible humility, he took their lead and threw himself on the ground beside them and said, I am nothing. I am dust. The three rabbis got up and said to each other, who does this guy think he is? Saying he's nothing and he is dust. Do you get the moral of this story? False piety. These three holy, humble rabbis throwing themselves on the ground day after day, being seen as uh, deep in humility, were doing it because it made them feel holier than other people. That is a danger. And it's a danger for all of us. We hear... uh, in the letter to James this morning, yet let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right? Be honest. Be authentic. Is that easy? Now, remember, be honest and authentic. Right? <laughs> See, it's not easy, is it? Because we don't want to say yes because then that seems to suggest that sometimes we find that hard, right? And maybe at times uh, we have to admit that we're human, like everyone else, and our yes isn't our yes. And our no is not our no. And this becomes especially hard when we find ourselves in a group of people who we respect, and who we want to respect us. And they may have done something or may be doing something or saying something which is not life-giving, which is harmful to others, and yet because we're so entrenched in that group, no matter how bad we know it is inside or how much we would like to say no, we say yes. Does that make sense? Have we been in those situations? The easy example of this is uh, high school, right? The idea of peer pressure. Or primary school peer pressure. I was of the blissful, youthful ignorance that once you got through primary school, that wouldn't happen so much anymore. And then I thought, okay, well, once I get through high school and become an adult and then start uh, running around in circles with these all, everybody else who's, of course, a beautifully well-put-together adult that's got all this stuff together, right? That won't happen anymore. I was incorrect. I forgot about human nature. We all do it at times. Part of the Christian journey and part of repentance, which, remember, means turning around, changing our actions and doing the work we need to do to change our hearts is bit by bit to become vulnerable enough and strong enough for our no to be no and our yes to be yes. That's a difficult lesson and it's a necessary lesson for all of us. Uh, And James, so the letter to James spells it out beautifully. Excuse me. So, then we get to this great gospel reading. Again, be honest and authentic. Did that sound like good news <laughs> this morning? <laughs> the gospel, good news. This is one of those pieces of scripture where I find it uh, that I'm very grateful that we don't take everything that is said literally. Because there are some societies that do. We all know what's going on in Afghanistan at the moment. We know that they've just brought in again public executions and amputations of hands and those kind of things. That comes from a literal reading of scriptures. That is the danger of what can happen when we do not engage intelligently wisely and prayerfully with our scriptures 
we can start to justify just about anything. And it's not okay. Jesus talks about, well, the disciples talk about a person who was casting out demons in his name. But there's a problem. He wasn't following us. They were shocked. He can't do that. He's not one of us. He wasn't following us. And Jesus' answer is quite simple. It's quite plain. It's quite open. Anyone who is not against us is for us. That's quite a simple teaching, isn't it? Yet we live in a world where there's thousands and thousands of Christian denominations and much of the time one denomination will say, well, these people aren't true followers of Jesus because they don't believe in A, B and C. Well, these people aren't true followers of believers because they don't believe in A, B or C. Well, these ones aren't because they seem to bow down to statues. Well, these ones aren't because they think this is okay when I think it's not. One of the things that broke the East and Western churches were three words that we say every single Sunday in the Creed and the Son, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, right? With that little clause that they added into an already agreed creed, the Eastern churches and the Western churches split. And then we have the Eastern Orthodox churches and the Western churches. So at our 8.30 service, this is a good teaching moment again, at our 8.30 service, we don't say that filioque clause. Right? We say proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Right? You would have, I've explained this before, but you notice that's not in there because we're used to it being in there. But at the 5 o'clock service, we do say it. So it's kind of having our cake and eating it too. Right? Just in case you're worried, I did email the bishop and ask the bishop, and yes, we're fine. <laughs> we're not breaking any rules. Okay. <clears throat> so this idea that anybody who gives a cup of water in my name will not lose their reward. Right? Yes, we're going to believe in things differently. And yes, at times when those beliefs are destructive and when they're hurting other people and when they're limiting a person's ability to thrive in a community, that should be dealt with. But believing in things in slightly different ways should not stop us from recognizing that person as a loved child of God, just as much as we are. The yes be yes and our no be no. So can anybody guess, I'm going to finish up on the really lovely part of the good news from this morning, you know, cutting off hands, gouging out eyes, cutting off feet, right? The question is, why don't we take that literally? I'm not going to answer that question for you. I want you to think about that. Jesus says that quite clearly. We use other pieces of Scripture, and we decide to take certain other pieces of Scripture literally to base things around it. He doesn't say, like he does in his parables, there was a man who did this, that, or the other, so he cut off his leg or whatever. He doesn't say, here, another parable. He says, if this happens, do this. There's no way to wriggle out of that, really. So why don't we take that literally? Ask that question, talk about that question. Um, <clears throat> one part of it is he's speaking in symbolic language like he does many, like much of the time. But can we guess, can one person remember, what is the word used for hell that Jesus uses exclusively? Do you remember it? I think somebody said it. Gehenna, that's it. Do you remember what Gehenna means? It is a rubbish tip. It's a physical place. It exists. It still exists today. The Valley of Ben-Hinnon in Israel. At the time of the first century in Jerusalem, just a reminder, it was just outside the gates of the city. It was a place where they burnt trash consistently, the fire that never dies. And it was a place where they burnt the bodies of executed criminals, where the worm never dies. That's what he's saying. The word in Greek is Gehenna. It is a place. It was a place. When he's talking about what's translated to hell, he's talking about Gehenna. And that place has a history of pagan use previously. So it has this dark kind of understanding to it. 
if you do these things, if you sin badly, chances are you will probably end up in that garbage dump. Because the law at that time was joined together with the religious leaders. What happened to Jesus when he was seen to be blaspheming? When he was seen to be a religious rebel? What happened to the disciples of other messiahs who claimed to be messiahs previously? They were killed and most probably ended up in Gehenna. That's what Jesus is talking about there. So yes, he's speaking in symbolic language. It's difficult for us because he doesn't explicitly say it about this teaching. But if we take Jesus' mission as a whole, we can see he doesn't want people maiming themselves. Of course he doesn't. He spent so much of his time on earth healing and loving. But the beauty of this lesson, the beauty of this teaching from Jesus is that whoever isn't against us is for us. We don't have to be against each other. Anyone who gives a cup of water to one of those who works in my name will not lose their reward. Simple, little acts of kindness are powerful. Simple expressions of faith are enough and are more than enough. Because it's not our works that we rely on, it is the incredible grace and gift that Christ has given by willingly going to the cross and forgiving. Because only the victim can forgive. So friends, we have a God which gives us difficult lessons that we need to discuss together, think about, study, uh, that should then lead us to prayer and closer relationship with God. And we have a God that reminds us at every turn of the incredible grace that is offered to each and every one of us. Even if we just give a cup of water. So let's, let's do that study and learn. Let's le- let us lead that to prayer, but let us never forget the grace and joy and mercy that is offered to us through Christ our Lord. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.